Okay, uh, welcome to this video on elimination reactions, and specifically E1 reactions. Here are three important things I want to talk about before I go into some examples. So the first thing I want to talk about is that E1 reactions are always in competition with SN1 reactions. If you don't know what SN1 reactions are, please check out my video on those. The way we can favor elimination is by adding heat to the system, and that is written by the symbol delta. So you might see something like delta underneath it, depending on what our uh, base is we're adding to the system. But that's how we favor elimination. We add heat. So what's the whole purpose of elimination? We are creating a carbon-carbon double bond. So we're creating an alkene. And we can create many types of alkenes. And there are certain alkenes that are better than others. And we use Zatsev's rule. And that is what I'm going to talk about next. Okay, let's talk about Zatsev's rule, which relates to uh, alkene stability. So, alkene stability. Because once I do an example, you will see that we can form many different types of alkenes. And some alkenes are more stable than others. So the first alkene that I want to talk about is tetra substituated. So tetra sub, I'll just write. And we can represent that by this right here. where we have one, two, three, four R groups coming off of our alkene in the middle, so it's tetra-substituated. We also have tri-substituated, so tri-sub, and I bet you can guess what that looks like. We have our alkene, we have an R, an R, and an R, so that's tri-substituated. So what would go here? Well, a hydrogen, so that'd be tri-substituated, where we have three different al or they don't have to be different, but three alkyl groups branching off of our alkene. So the next one would be di-substituated, but here's the, the, the problem. Not really a problem, but there's two different di-substituated products we can get. We can get a cis and we can get a trans. So this would be our trans, which is di-substituated, so di-sub, let me put this farther over here, di sub is trans, put our R groups here, and then we just have some hydrogens. So we have it trans, and this is more stable than cis because our R groups are farther apart, so that would make more sense. I don't know why I wrote it over here, but here's another one, di sub, and this will be cis, where we have both of our R groups on the same side. So. R group here, R group here, hydrogen, hydrogen. So this would be cis. Um, another one that we can show is, oh, there's a third dice substituted one I don't wanna forget, where we have both of our R groups on one side. So this is trans. Both our groups are on opposite sides. Cis, both our groups are on the same side. And these die substituated, which is one to one, I should write. One to one die substituated, where both of our R groups are on one side, on like the right hand side or left hand side. Cis is on the top or the bottom. And trans is more stable than cis, and cis is more stable than die substituated one to one. And tri is more stable. So stability is increasing as we go up. All right, stability. Where tetra is the most stable. Tri is more stable than di substituated, but this is where it gets a little bit more tricky. Trans is more stable than cis, which is more stable than one to one. And the last one we can have that's the least stable is mono substituated, where we have one R group. And here's our hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. This is mono substituated, so mono sub. So when we form an alkene product where we have more than one, we choose the most stable as our major product. Now, let's do some examples so this makes more sense. I'd recommend writing this down. 
Okay, before I go through the mechanism, I want to tell you that elimination roll E1 works really well with uh, tertiary and secondary alkyl halides. So here's a secondary alkyl halide and here's a tertiary alkyl halide because look, this carbon has one, two, three. This carbon has one, two, secondary, tertiary. Also, E1 works really well with weak bases. So what kind of weak bases? Something like water, methanol. Those will be really good for an E1 type reaction. So let's do a simple problem first. So let's take a tertiary alkyl halide, such as this one. Let's react it with water, our weak base, and heat. So what's the first thing that happens? Just like SN1, our leaving group leaves first. And that gives us a carbocation. And our Br- is floating around in solution, but who cares about that? So, what's important to know is your teacher may have discussed it. This carbon right here in the center where our leaving group left is our alpha carbon. There's alpha. And these carbons directly connected to our alpha carbon is our beta carbons. Oh, that was ugly. These are our beta carbons. Now, I'm only going to label one, well, actually I'll label them all, with the subscript one, because this molecule is completely symmetrical. Look, this methyl, this methyl, and this methyl are all the same thing. So they're the, all the same betas. So, I'm going to draw in my hydrogens in our weak base. So I'm going to just choose this carbon, this beta carbon, arbitrarily. I could have chose this one as well as this one. So our weak base will attack this proton, and these electrons right here in this bond will be shifted to form a double bond, okay? So you'll get something that looks like that, where this was just hydronium H3O+, plus, which just formed there. So that is your product. That's our only product we could form because if we took the hydrogen off of here, we would just get something like that. And that is the same thing as this. They're identical. But also remember E1 and SN1 are always in competition. So we also have to show our other product where our bromine. So I'm gonna write this E1. Now I'm gonna do the SN1 where our bromine leaves. So H, we're still doing H2O on heat. We have our carbocation. Now our weak base, our, our weak nucleophile, will attack that carbocation and we'll get something that looks like this. I'm just gonna write OH2. Remember, it does not like to have this positive charge on this oxygen, so another water will come up and take one of these protons. So I'm gonna draw this out. So OH2, positive charge. Another water molecule will come out and take a proton and push those electrons back onto this oxygen for a final, final product. Uh, I'm gonna draw it over here. So we'll get a tertiary alcohol, an OH. So these would be our two products right here in this reaction. But what would be our major? Well, since we are using heat, this is our major product right here, our alkene, because we use heat. Now, let's do a harder example. Okay, let's do an example where we get more than one type of alkene. So, more than one alkene. So, this guy right here will give us more than one alkene. So let's just choose a different weak base this time, methanol and heat, so we favor E1. So what's the first thing that happens is our bromine leaves to give us a carbocation. So we'll get something that looks like this. Now, the thing about this one is 
we now have more than one beta carbon. So let's just write, label our alpha. This guy right here is our alpha carbon. So our beta are the ones connected directly to it. So this one's beta, this one's a beta. They are both the same type of beta because they are symmetrical. This carbon is connected to our alpha, this one's connected to our alpha, and they each are connected the same way. This carbon right here is a different beta, so I'll write that as beta 2 because it just looks totally different than this guy. This guy only has two hydrogens, this one has three. Um, so I'm going to react at our beta 1 first. So I'm going to redraw this right here. So. So actually, mm, I'm gonna react to this this one first. So I'm gonna draw my hydrogens so you can see what I'm doing. So our oxygen and methanol will grab a proton, and these electrons right here are going to be shifted to here to make a double bond. So we'll get something that looks like this. That will be our product. Now. I'm going to redraw it again because we can get another product. This beta, this B1, this guy right here, we have two hydrogens. Let's add our weak base, methanol. And we can grab a proton. And we'll take these electrons right here and shift them to make a double bond. So we'll get something that looks like this where our double bond is here instead of here also remember e1 always competes with sn1 so we need to do an sn1 reaction so hopefully I have enough room i'll write sn1 so these are e1 so first thing just like in e1 our leaving group leaves so i'm just going to draw our carbocation so we need to show our nucleophile CH3OH attacking this guy right here to give us something that looks like this, where we have our methyl and our OCH3. I already deprotonated this hydrogen that would be here, which would give us a positive charge on this oxygen, but that's just more steps that don't need to be shown. This video is really just catered towards E1 reactions. So if you want to check out my SN1 videos, go for that. So which E1 is more favored? This one or this one? It turns out it would be this one. This is our major product. Why is that? Well, if you look here, we have one, two, three alkyl groups branching off of our double bond. So this is tri-sub situated. So tri sub which is more stable than one to one because look this double bond has hydrogens over here and it has one two alkyl groups right here so that's one to one di substituted so one to one because it's on the one carbon di substituted so I'll write one one di sub and that is not even close to being as stable as a tri-substituated one. So this is our major product. So that does it for this video on elimination reactions. I hope to help you guys. And yep, that's it.